Hello my Juicy co-creators, Lilu here. I'm in amazing Manhattan, New York on the Juicy Tour and I was one of the juiciest uh, yogi here next to me, Philippe, hello. Hi Lilu, welcome to New York. So you, are you, do we say you're a yogi because you're a yoga teacher? Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I'm a practicing yogi. I also am a yoga teacher. You know, those two categories don't always overlap, but often. Very cool. So you travel the world, you're a New Yorker, you live here and you teach yoga and it's more than yoga really. I mean, what you do is art, it's playful and fun and what's really going on once you start moving as you just did? Well, you know, necessarily a yoga practice brings out a person's natural gifts and they, you know, when, they're, when a person is exposed, you know, it's a very personal thing even though it's an archetypal practice, it's a universal practice designed to open up the flower of each person. And so what comes out for me, you know, is the artistic experience, the freedom, the creative energy, you know, and I think that has a lot to do just with my, my personality. Mm -hmm. You started really got young, young, 18? Yeah, I was 18 years old. My mother took me to my first yoga class. And what happened in that class? Well, you know, it's funny. The teacher himself hadn't taken very many classes. And so he, what he would do is he would bring books and we would look at the books and try the different exercises from the books. And I enjoyed it so much. I found it so deeply therapeutic um, that I, I wanted to do it every day. I went out and got my own books and I started working from a home practice. Uh -huh. And yeah. then from there, you just went deeper and deeper. I read that you uh, practice uh, Ashanta yoga. Ashtanga. Ashtanga, sorry. I've spent some time with Ashtanga. Um, my primary teachers are here in New York based. Uh, Dharma Mitra has been practicing for a very long time. He's a real influence of mine. Uh, I also have a Taoist esoteric philosophy teacher named Naveen Mashan, who lives a little, a little bit upstate up in um, Westchester and uh, you know I, I'm blessed to have so many great teachers here great Iyengar teachers great Ashtanga teachers great Anusara teachers so I teach from an intersection of all these places um, I teach a vinyasa yoga style which for me is a real intersection of form so I get to mix, mix and match and pick and choose and what I give is my own special blend that's really the best because it's all about letting our essence and our juice flow, isn't that's it? That's the juiciest. Uh -huh. That's the juiciest. When it really comes from a place that's true to you. You know, you teach what your teachers have taught you, but you also have to teach from your personal experience. Mm -hmm. So, you travel the world. You went to some amazing places. I saw some videos of you in India, in yeah. uh, Costa Rica. Wow. What a place, India. It's yeah. like another world. Uh -huh. And you just right there, do the pose and those... Uh, you just would never expect to see yoga yeah. poses in those... I just love that combination. Oh, thank you very much. You know, we were doing a little bit of that here in New York before we went to India. You know, setting up in places, you know, where we, were, we really felt like we were, you know, bringing it to the world in a way. Exposing people who would never otherwise even, you know, think of yoga or consider yoga or maybe have some ideas about what yoga is. Um, and just sort of bringing it out to the public in a in a demonstration kind of fashion, you know, and we were videotaping it, and, um, that, and they're really inspired by a teacher named Iyengar, uh, who became first became famous doing public demonstrations. Um, so I started doing that here in New York, and it ended up, you know, going with me to India, and it was so interesting to see the response there, because you know, yoga hasn't been very popular in India for almost a thousand years. Really? That's how old yoga is. Um, it's there it's a very culturally mundane sort of everyday yeah. thing and now suddenly uh, Easterners are getting inspired by the movement that's happening in the West you know there's such a powerful movement in the West toward toward these lineages and third toward these practices and philosophies um, so setting up like we did in India it was just so interesting to see people Indians get inspired by Westerners uh -huh. doing yoga 
Are you inspired on how yoga is evolving here in this society? Because a lot of people do it also for exercise reasons or toning reasons, but sure. there's so much more to yoga. Is that sometimes uh, shocks you a little bit? Or? Well, you know, there's a popular maxim, and that is that the reason you come to class isn't always the reason that you stay. And it's probably true for every single person who has ever taken up yoga. You know, you might take it up for any number of reasons because you want to feel better um, because you want you know it could be because you want to look better it could be it could be any reason but in some reason in some ways there's no wrong reason for coming to the practice because those reasons expose you to so much more and necessarily if you stick with it 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 opens you in a very special way so I think actually the fitness movement that's happening in the West is in response to a uh, 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 a wellness epidemic that's happening in the West. So I think it's actually wonderful that people are coming to holistic practices like yoga so to get themselves fit and get themselves healthy and well. I think it's a, a real issue, especially in our country, health and wellness. So it's, it, it, I think it, it's only natural that that's the avenue through mm -hmm. which people approach these you know, broader uh -huh. philosophies. So it is a philosophy, it is a lifestyle, it's not oh, just yeah. yoga. Can you tell us what's around that, what makes it a yogi sure. lifestyle? Or <laughs> yeah, well, you know, they say that yoga is an eightfold path, you know. Um, when we say yoga and we say it's not just yoga, well, we're really talking about one of those eight limbs in the practice, and that's yoga asana. There's also, of course, the pranayama, or the control of the flow of life force in your body. Um, there are the ethical observances, you know, which basically says you should be getting your food, you should be getting your sustenance, you should be living in a way that's ethically sound, you know, because it's really hard to meditate on the edge of infinity when you're distracted by conflicts that are erupting in your life. And so it's just, it's more efficient to be ethical so you won't be distracted mm -hmm. by your ethical, you know, conflicts. Um, you won't be distracted by the aches and ailments in your body. And you can go to some, uh, you can enter those last four limbs of yoga which really have to do with meditation and sense withdrawal and concentrated effort and effortless concentration total oneness with the cosmos. So that's yoga. All that is yoga. And right now people are entering through this like feeling better in their bodies. That's wonderful. We live in a, in a physical world. You should be free and clear physically as well as in these other areas. All yoga eventually leads back to itself, if that makes sense. You might enter through devotional, loving yoga, singing, and eventually it's going to bring you to posture work because you have to be able to sit long enough to perform your practice you know and eventually that's going to bring you to the pranayama or control of the life forces for your singing you know so no matter what entryway you choose all yoga leads back to yoga so do you feel that you are um, um, nourishing yourself through prana like really the light comes in and that's what gives you that force and those poses. Absolutely. Tell us more. Yeah, well, you know, each pose is designed to open up a particular aspect of your body and of your being to that pranic flow, that, that flow of essential life force that animates everything around us. Even inanimate objects contain that life force, that essential living force. So each pose is designed to open up a different aspect of you to receive it and when you string the postures together in a sequence it's a lot like playing music you know and you you get overtones and undertones and harmonies and you know you sort of ride that energy wave so you're really in full synergy in that moment with the universe with the life force with the chi with the prana when it's working uh -huh. when, when it's going well it's pretty amazing is that most of the time or sure. even at your well. level What's great is that uh, a physical practice does give you almost an immediate way to access uh -huh. um, these deep feelings and these um, deep understandings, realizations about your world that make living easier. And so a physical practice is a very tangible thing. I mean, at almost at any moment you can drop in, you can do a little breathing exercise, you can focus your mind, you know, whereas a lot of the more esoteric aspects they they are sometimes more difficult to access you know like the yoga of 
of, of philosophy or the yoga of understanding it's wonderful but sometimes it's a little more elusive mm-hmm. you know whereas you always have a body you can at any moment you know stretch your wrist you can at any moment physically open the tissues around your heart and it's going to make a big difference mm-hmm. as to how well you can energetically Oh. Tell us about the impact that yoga has on the opening of the heart or there are some particular poses that can help that and how essential is that within the whole practice to have the heart open once you're practicing? Well, you know, in, in Chinese, um, in traditional Chinese medicine, the heart is referred to as the center of intelligence in the body, which is just so interesting, you know, coming at it from a Western paradigm, we think all the intelligence is in the is in the brain and when you drop out of your head when you start to drop into your body the energetic center of your body is definitely your heart it's it's very measurable you know it's the it's from it's from where the life force you know is emitting and is coming it's very clear and so you know, it's easy for us to get lost, especially as New Yorkers, especially as Westerners. You know, we're, we're very lost, especially in living in this time that we are, which is a very sort of mentally, you know, uh, I don't want to say disturbed because it also has the positive aspects of the mental activity. It's a very intellectual time that we're living in, in. But when you drop into your body and you get into that heart center, you access realms of... Um, realms of understanding and realms of power and interacting in your world that you really just can't access with your mind alone. One major style of poses that opens the heart is backbends. You know, it's very clear. You know, you, you can set someone up in a gentle restorative backbend and they could be weeping within half an hour. You know, I mean, it's you, you open up those, those deep emotions. But in another way, um, you always want to balance the recipe. Um, so you don't want to only backbend, you know. It's like a really good recipe has a little bitter, a little sweet, a little salty, you know, has a, has a nice round mm-hmm. quality. So again, it's very much about the listening, huh? Oh, yoga has been defined by great teachers as listening. Yeah. Very, very cool. You, you, I, I see a lot of, um, there's some cool, very, very cool and juicy videos with you doing partner yoga. Oh, Tell us about that. How did you discover it and how does this add to your yoga practice? Wow, you know, partnering is such a wonderful way to connect with people and to realize that your body doesn't stop in your own skin, you know. Um, it's doing yoga in the bodies of others, doing yoga between two bodies. Yoga really means harmonic union. And so in these partnering exercises, you have an opportunity to experience that harmonic union, not just within the different components of your own body, but with another body. Mm -hmm. And so just as these postures open you to light, to love, to understanding, when you exchange that with someone, it can be a more um, uh, uh, effective transmission, even for yourself, you know, because it's in these moments of intimacy, it's in these moments of connecting that we really experience the most growth as human beings. So, um, yeah, it's super interesting work. Uh, one of my mentors, Simon Park, has done a lot to teach me about that particular modal- modality and and the work that I do, you know, here mostly working here in New York City, you know, I have a lot of opportunity to to connect to people and it's part of my daily practice. Mm. So where are you taking it from here? Are you pursuing some things? Are you just really opening yourself more to whatever life is going to offer so that you can deepen this practice? Well, of course, it's a little bit of both, just like a good cooking recipe. You know, I've, <laughs> I've got my cosmic vision, but um, I'm also balancing that with, with patience. You know, I, I'm open to the graces of the universe, and I'm willing to make the effort to, to manifest my reality. And I'm really just trying to hold the center space between all those places. A good center is a good circumstance, is a good wheel good circumference you know so with a good wheel you not only roll smoothly through life but when you fall you bounce and you bounce spherically um so yeah it's a little bit of both (laughs) i really believe in the in the dialogue 
between effort and grace, mm. between vision and patience, mm. goal setting and willpower. Is there something else that you would like to share with us that is on your heart or that feels right to say right now or call to action or? Oh, you know, I mean, it, you know, it's just so wonderful to watch people open and flower to their original nature. And it's such a wonderful experience to go through yourself. And in a way, all you have to do is invite that. And it happens really quite naturally. All you have to do is step out of your own ways of thinking in order to see the world anew and afresh and without boundary. So. Thank you, Philip. Thank you, Lilu. <laughs> Much, much love from beautiful New York City. Enjoy the other video, actually, with all those beautiful poses that you took on this morning. It was yeah. awesome. Thank you from this rooftop. Absolutely. How lucky. What a privilege to be here right now. So nice to share it with you. <laughs>